If we play two tones at the same frequency, we only hear one note, obviously. But what happens if we slowly increase one of those frequencies while keeping the other constant? Well, at first, the change is too small to notice, so you don't hear any difference in the pitch. You just continue hearing the same tone. But as we keep increasing one of those frequencies, you will soon begin to notice a change in pitch. This is called the just noticeable difference. And it's the smallest amount of change that you can actually notice or detect. The just noticeable difference is about a tenth of a semitone in the middle register, but increases to about half a semitone in the low bass notes. This means a bass guitar can be more out of tune than a regular guitar without anybody noticing. So up to this point, the notes are too close together to hear any difference in pitch. This is like touching your arm with two fingers holding them close together. Even though you're being touched at two different points, you only feel one pressure point because your fingers are too close together to distinguish between them. So this is a note at 500 hertz. Now I'll add a note at 501 hertz. Notice that the pitch hasn't changed and we are still hearing the same note. You can confirm this by humming the note at 500 hertz and then continuing to hum the same pitch when the note at 501 hertz is added. You'll notice that there's no change in pitch. But even though it doesn't seem like the pitch has changed at all, it still somehow sounds different. This is because of something called beating. The volume is going up and down over time. And this variance in volume is called a beat. And it creates a kind of wah, wah, wah sound or effect. And as we keep increasing the frequency of one of those notes, we begin to hear a change in pitch, but we still don't start hearing two different notes. Instead, we hear a single note at the average frequency, but still with that beating. And the beats seem to have gotten faster. And indeed, beats happen at the difference in frequencies between the notes. So if we have a note at 500 hertz, and we add to this a note at 510 hertz, Then when I play them together, you're actually hearing a note at 505 hertz with a beating at 10 hertz. That is, the loudness or amplitude of the note goes up and down 10 times a second. Now, beating happens because the two notes continuously fall in and out of phase with each other. A good analogy for this is as follows. You're walking with a friend who takes bigger steps than you, but also takes slower steps, so that you're walking at the same speed. Say that he takes five steps for every six steps that you take. Now, if you start together, you will gradually fall out of step, but then return into step every time you take six steps. This will happen in a repeating cycle. The same thing is happening with these two notes. They are constantly falling in and out of sync, and thus their amplitude varies over time. Now this continues until the limit of frequency discrimination, at which point we start to hear two distinct notes. 
Now, for pure sine waves, this can be as much as one or two semitones for low frequency notes and up to three semitones for high frequency notes. But this is considerably lower for more complex waves. So we can hear two different notes a semitone apart on the piano because the waves are more complex. So as the frequency of one note continues to increase, the beating gets faster and faster until it becomes too rapid for our brain to distinguish. At this point, our brain can't decide whether it's one note or two, so we hear a kind of coarseness or roughness to the sound as the beating begins to sound more like buzzing. And this coarseness happens at larger intervals in the bass, which partially explains why small intervals in the lower register sound so unpleasant. Then finally, above this point, we start to hear two clear, distinct notes. Now, too much beating can sound unpleasant and like the notes are out of tune, but a little bit of beating can actually make the note sound much more interesting and complex. This is why violins in an orchestra sound different to a solo violin. Each violin is playing the same note, but their sound waves have ever so slightly different frequencies and different phases, and thus sound richer in total. And this is called the chorus effect, where the same note is played but with slightly different phases, timbres, and frequencies. This can also be reproduced electronically, like in a guitar effects pedal. Now, there's also another kind of beat called a second order beat. This also results from playing two notes that are slightly out of tune with each other. But this time, instead of a variance in amplitude, it causes a variance in wave shape. So rather than changes in volume, we hear changes in timbre. This occurs with slightly out of tune octaves.